Maybe I'm an introvert. I most definitely am an introvert. I seldom had guests because I seldom had a place to have guests. But when I had guests, I was so attempted to nothingness that I most often went into the kitchen to wash the dishes at my own party to create some sort of order or make myself useful. Since I didn't like to be in, even if they were in the garden, I remember vaguely, because I have in my mind the kitchen I was in like there. To be of more use to them since I wasn't looking. That wasn't looking, see, that's wrong English, but that's wrong how it was all wrong. To me, that was all wrong. That wasn't looking. They weren't seeing me or anything. See, I not maybe I do need to be the center of attention, but not in vain, oblivious ways. I need to have attention. And superficial and can't handle. So uh, I fleed. Ich habe been geflüchtet. I fled to the kitchen to create some kind of sense for my being there. Yeah, I can understand that in a social reunion I must flee to my room and close the door. No, I personally couldn't do it because when I was host I had to be like somehow accessible. Or going to the restroom. Yeah, close the door for a moment to actually breathe. That yes, absolutely yes. I think I, I diminished I, I I exited that part later. I think I could establish a different vibration to actually handle people. I think I, I worked that through. That only meant that people would, would actually start looking. It's when I look at people, I have interested curiosity. That's my starter point. I say it again. Of course I can't do it here because they shoot me. Before I even started, it already shot me down. From far away, they have the intent to shoot me down, not even look. That hurts. I don't want to even go there. But when this is not happening, I can just look in interested curiosity. And the fact that I have established that many people would do that around me. Yeah, maybe there's some here, some bicho raro. A strange, a strange, but not a rauch. Maybe a strange dragon. <clears throat> Which I still got the permission from them to be that strange because I looked strange. Yeah, I mean, fo stranger, foreigner in that place. But the interest in having a look at the moment, somehow there were. I can I can look into this today, and I can I can acknowledge this. I can even see it right now as I look in certain situations. I see like places in the house, another another house that was a that was later. It was a different place. Because then something is established when people pay attention. It's like, yeah, imagine you put it more than a string, but they put a string and each one has a string and passes by a, from uh, to each person the one that, that string. <coughs> and now you make the string vibrate, so it, it occupies the space like like a like a large tunnel, and it's all over the place. That's better. never alone. I think people never felt alone anymore when they were near me. Oh, that's nice. So in order to achieve this, Oscar was the starting point. As I am listening to the field and acknowledge now, Oscar, his mommy called him El Cachito, little baby boy.
he, she got a lot of children and maybe he was the long, youngest one. Very protected. And actually, yeah, a well read family. But again, they lived in an apartment uh, immigrating to Mexico from Bolivia. Uh, diplomats, uh, political asylum. So some sort of consciousness was there, perhaps. On the other hand, she was just a Latin mom, like a helicopter mom hovering. So he never really developed anything. I liked him, but I, I did not dislike him. That's pretty much what, what it comes down to. Like there were like nothing really to like, but nothing to dislike either. And so he talked very important all the time. Like I'm very relevant. And he started studying and then he had something to say because now he, or after his study, he started working in what he had studied, some engineer thing. Not sure exactly what it was. So he started talking about what he was implementing, apparently. So he started talking like a dictionary. And honestly, I always looked at him like, poor bugger. <laughs> I cherished it because after all the loneliness in Mexico, uh, years later, I bumped into a friend and then he called me and we remained friends. And I cherish this very much because people just usually don't do that. So I consider Bolivians a little bit like they are over, they are embracing, they keep to themselves, but they kind of invited me to be part of them in a way. This is those, those are the things that are unspoken. But those are not Mexican. They are foreigners in Mexico and they live. So again, Oscar to me was super boring, but he was not an evasive person because I don't live in that low vibration. And when he started talking about whatever that was, what his job was and how important the rules were, basically what it was, it doesn't really matter. I knew about what he was talking about because that's what the European community brought in, quality control. He sounded like a little robot and I really felt sorry. I, I thought to myself, when is there going to be a person coming out? I mean, is there ever? So then he and... Okay, there were three Bolivians, and they were kind of related, cousins or so. I'm not sure who was related to whom. And one of them, not Oscar, called me, but because of Oscar. Oh, how was that? Doesn't really matter. So anyway, three came to my house because I wanted to, but not my house, but the house in the foundation I lived because it was large. And it was in the Mexican rich people's um, weekend spot, Cuernavaca. So they wanted party and wanted the house and asked me if I could come and they would bring everything. I said, sure, why not? So Flavio was that and his super buddy, um, the other one. So they are two very intelligent tall men, lots of out of inside of life. And one was absolutely obnoxious. Flavio was the totally damaged as a person. He was like the high professor of any university in intellect and he was totally damaged by his, you know, un, uh, <laughs> his father who left him and whatnot. But then there was Oscar at, on the other side. He was completely oblivious to anything life was. So it was kind of curious to see how the three were doing that thing. And like Flavio, for example, he would cook. He showed me how to actually chop the garlic. I never knew how to peel it. He would clean. He would just do as we do. We just do stuff. They would bring meat, they would grill it. He would bring playlists of new music. I learned new music. And Oscar would move a finger, that motherfucker. He would not cook. He would not clean. He would not wash it. Nothing. Mommy boy. Well, no one was expecting anything from him anyway. And if there wouldn't have been cousins, there was like no place. And Oscar had anything to do because they liked party and they had a group I heard. You see, I'm not into that. Not that group, not that party. And Oscar not, but they, eventually I noticed they smoked weed. They asked me if I could smoke weed in, in the house. And Oscar would never smoke weed. And they were not drinking. They had maybe a couple. I don't think they were drinkers. Like, do you eat and you have some wine, you have some, but it's not really drinking. Like, and Oscar wouldn't drink either. I don't know, maybe he had a couple, but he wouldn't. He was like a super austere person. I compared, I compared him with Antonio Banderas because he wasn't invasive. And maybe for other people, he was like good looking. Maybe Banderas is good looking. I, like I said, to me, he's, yeah, he's good looking, but man, is he boring. <sighs> because, now I have to insert the picture of the onion, because there's nothing there. Nothing to engage with, nothing to relate to. 
so there were also not trauma in his life, at least not visible. There were no visible trauma in Oscar's life. He didn't understand anything about his life. Here's the thing, and that was really funny. That's a really funny story. But before I say it, I just want to say it again. I want to put the picture in. Wait, I've got to do it right now. Well, there, here's the core of the onion. You see there's a core which holds the whole thing together. So when you have a core like that, then the outer layers might have picked something, which is kind of weird because I always visualize the white onion because that was the boring thing we did at school, biology. Yeah, that's why I say I did high school with this and this and that and something else. Because I had to choose between a certain number of subjects and I chose biology as the least worst thing to do. Totally not mattering. I would have just chosen something completely different. But I had to. Same, what, a, what is this trunk of? No, it was math, physics, chemistry, or biology. I had to choose one of them. And, well, maybe now this little example becomes obsolete. But let's just do Oscar. So, <laughs> he arrived to the country. So, at very occasional, we would just go somewhere. And I was with the Mexican, who was Oscar's best friend. And he wasn't deep either. <laughs> But he lo noticed things, but he wasn't allowed to talk either. So they had the same common ground of mommy hovering over there, all the systems and everyday works. Oh, actually, nothing actually works there. I mean, not the works and nothing works. And then it was like, okay, Oscar says, I'm going to call a girl. He was like, well, you see, in certain circles, it's okay. Because in Mexico, like I said, when you talk to a person... It's not like an America disco assholeness. You actually communicate with the situation with the person. So they are both played in La Pena, which is this. Uh, it's a political statement in a way. So you talk, and it doesn't mean if you ask a girl for her number that you're gonna go want to do have. Maybe it doesn't mean, but it does also not mean there is a respect to a person. We know that. So giving out a number is is not like it's not such of a big of a deal. It doesn't mean, oh my God, I have a potential marriage going on. Although maybe it is. But it's honest, it's truth, and it's always there. But Oscar, he was so stupid. I mean, really stupid. So he says, I'm going to call. Oh, no. Then he said, okay, he had a whole agenda. That was a dirty joke, but it was real. He had a whole agenda full of phone numbers from different girls. Lots of them. So then when someone would call him, and she would play, hola, hi, how are you doing? And, and he, he says, who is this? And then she says, well, don't you remember? And then some sort of words like, guess who I am, right? Blah, blah, blah. And then the asshole would start naming names. I mean, imagine your name is Sylvia. And you call the guy you met and he asked you for your number and you thought he was interested because maybe the way he formulated his sentence sounded a little bit more enticing than any other idiot around. So your name is Sylvia. And the guy says, is it Angelina? Is it Barbara? No, wait, it's Tomasina. Ah! What an idiot! <laughs> that he actually said so. He really, he didn't got any of life. Well, of course she hung up and never saw him again. So he lived with his parents in this deluxe apartment, has it, had his room, whereas his brothers and sisters already had moved out did their life, got married, what not. And well, that time went on. And then when he, the event, when he came to my house and he said, well, Zilke, you have so much energy. And Flavi was there and the other one was there too. Okay, whatever. I saw a light in his eyes. I think in that moment he kind of fell in love with me. That was interesting and strange because I have never seen that before. And of course it was totally, I mean, I'm inaccessible because it was just too bland. I see the onion, there's really nothing there. Yikes. I mean, a friend, yeah, but I, ugh, don't get me coming. Yet, close after that, he, he, he went to marry. Or maybe he had a few girlfriends, I don't know. And I liked one really much. For him. If you're friends, we care for people. I mean, I care for people. So, that was nice. I, saw, I, I met uh, uh, the many of girlfriends. And even, I mean, that was later after the dumb, dumb phone play. He... <laughs> God, I mean, cherish what? I cherish that. I cherish the consistency and the consistency that I'm not absolutely alone in the world, that there is someone who actually remembers that my name is that and I do exist. And we don't have really a history together, 
But yeah, we went to the movies from time to time. <laughs> and that was his other girlfriend. He had just a uh, the gal with a loud mouth, also from Bolivia and also idiot. I cherish the consistency of not feeling completely abandoned in, in a place in the world. That's it, because people will come and go. So, well, actually two things happen. No, he was such a good of a friend that once or twice I could go to his apartment and have an overnight there because I didn't live in the city. I knew he would not, I mean, he would not touch me. Yeah, I actually could, he had like, I could actually share a bed with Oscar. Because we're friends, you would not, have, there is nothing going on. We would not talk to it. I don't know, I'm from Germany and that's happening. And he's from, I don't know. But that is when people are sympathetic to people. Because it seems like Mexico is all about, you know, when a girl and a, when the guy talks to a girl, it's all about, I just want to go and lay you and nothing else. And when we talk to people, even the Bolivians, we just want to get to know you as a person. Maybe you can become part of our circle of friends, those who had one. And we still respect you. And if something happens, well, that's completely irrelevant at the time. Because no one was really up for serious stuff at the moment. At least that's how it felt to me that that's what they were saying. Still intending to find their way into life and still intending to insert themselves into and still looking at, you know, what has to be done, like job-wise, work-wise. Still figuring stuff out, not time for settling. But in respect to the conversation you have with other people as of connection. And for Oscar, I only had just been business because he didn't really understand anything of connection, although he was there, but he didn't understand it. Now, I really always was welcome in Oscar's life, as I was sitting next to the Mexican, right in the middle, Oscar and the Mexican, I was right in the middle. And neither paid close attention, but like combined of the two, at least I didn't feel alone. <laughs> That's the truth of the matter. Oscar seemed to have to pay more attention to me, in this the intention. But they never talked really with me, they, all, they talked to each other and I was just sitting there. Yeah, and then we went dancing and they didn't really dance either, but then eventually one danced a dance and then the other danced a dance and after a while one danced a dance. So when there were like 50 dances, I had four in the night and I cried. <laughs> so what the fuck? I want to dance. This is a dancing place. Why else would we be here? You can talk any place, anywhere, but here is a dancing place. There is a band. It's Dos Van Van. Let's go. Shit, man, my enthusiasm and their lameness, lam, arsh. It's getting really long here. <laughs> anyway, I felt really sad when Oscar talked to me about his girlfriend, which I met, which I liked a lot for him, because she was like Peña style, and she was kind of cool. I, I don't know, I just felt her good. And what an arsh he had been, because they went together, and then he told me what happened, but he was very righteous about the story. And I felt almost crying inside, said, what an idiot. But he didn't ask me for advice, so I didn't give it to him. I do not give advice unrequited. That's not the type of person I had been. But I thought about it and I still cry because it, it acknowledges just our woman feminine that, how we are feminine, where we are women and how we are lonely in the world because of an asshole like him. He might have it all for certain, good looks, he has a job, he's responsible, very responsible, yes. He has his apartment, he keeps it all nice, not exaggerated, but okay. And he has to go out and wants, and then she wants to be addressed emotionally, and the fucker just can't give it out, the emotion. And she feels lonely, so she is intending to reach him. I think it's a classical story of us. Trying to reach the guy to actually have a connection, and he just doesn't know how to react. He, he disregards her as a lunatic, where she is crying inside, after he had invited her, they went together to some beach and she just needed him to be there for her. And he didn't understand and even that, that how stupid Oscar was. It could have been, if he would have been, it could have been, that could have been as much, I think, totally. That's how I am, I so care for people, I really think about their happiness. And then eventually he got married to 
And I was invited, so I'll go ahead and sing a song for you, guys. And here I was in this new rich place in Mexico. I had never met the bride, and I thought, what the fuck? Here was this, what was that? Okay, Oscar, he, he, his body is like Antonio Bandera. I said, he is not tall, he is not small, he is not slim, he is not overweight, he's just like there. A firm body. So that's why. And also his face is not long, it's not wide, it's just like that. Like very much in the middle of everything. And here is this overweight, fake blonde. I mean, fake, what does it say, fake blonde? Fake blonde means like I'm an asshole, I'm sorry, I have to say, because there were nothing I like Shannon or Connor going on, nothing new punk nothing just blah blah new rich pretentious bitch who was also lonely maybe in her now 40s and oscar was also i don't know how they hooked up so what the fuck and that why and i noticed that that uh, they should just walk out of that right away i, I sent my ave maria for him or them him i walked off and i think they were married for three days and unfortunately, I appeared at the wedding and I gave out my opinion loudly in the field. Of course, I never had a word. He kind of ran my head because we were friends for so long. And he probably noticed at the very spot what a terrible mistake he had made. Because now, of course, she claimed alimony for a child that he didn't have. A child are really in this apartment because she's a bitch. Not on our league, because we can have relationships. We can also separate. We don't ask them for anything. We're just people trying to make it in life. Yeah, and why is all this? Well, how does this conclude? It's, that's not gossip, it's just... And I have no clue what... Oh, okay, well, then should I talk about Oscar? Then he left Mexico, went to Bolivia and married a German girl. <gasps> that was even worse. Oh, not worse. It's just a different... But not a good German girl. I mean, a good girl, but like a grey mouse. She, he married a grey mouse. I have no clue what happened in his life. Anyway, endless sorry I felt for the guy. <laughs>